Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. You know, I've never really been a huge fan of home floor. You know, I've always felt like, you know, if you're better than me, you should be able to whoop me anyway. It doesn't make a difference where it is, whether it's in your building or whether it's in my building. And the reason why I feel like that is because I've seen, I saw... The Philadelphia 76ers in 1983 go into Los Angeles and sweep the Lakers. I saw the Lakers in 1985 go into Boston and win the NBA championship. I saw the Detroit Pistons in 1988 in the Boston Celtic reign in Boston. I saw the Bulls in 91 go into Detroit and in the Detroit Pistons. And I could. Th this is an ongoing thing. I've always felt like if you're better than me, you should be able to whoop me anywhere. It doesn't make a difference where we are. But after that game five in Miami, there was no evidence for me to suggest, there was no evidence to me to suggest that this Miami Heat team was going into Boston and winning game six. They had a backcourt of Strauss and Kyle Lowry, who went 0 for 15. Three of their five best backcourt players. And Strauss, Lowry, and Victor Oladipo went 1 for 22 for the game. Strauss hadn't made a shot in two games. Jimmy Butler coming into this, coming into this game six was averaging nine points. He wasn't giving them anything. Bam Adebayo has been a forgotten man. There was no reason for me to believe watching these guys after what I had seen in the two, in the two previous games that, that they had a shot in winning this game. And it just so happened that it was in Boston. Which is why we play the games. And the Miami Heat have, and what they've always had, is it's Miami Heat basketball. It's a tough Gritty, hard-nosed, in-your-face basketball team that's not going to roll over. And they've proven that time and time again. That you are going to have to out them. You're not going to out-tough them. You're not going to outsmart them. You're, you're just going to have to outplay them. And I can't say enough about Jimmy Butler basically saying last night that I'm gonna have. I thought that I'm. I thought that he was gonna have to score 50 in order for them to win. Well, he was pretty close. He went for 47 last night, and he looked right from the beginning like this is what it's gonna be tonight. He came ready to rock and roll, and those guys followed him. Struess finally made some shots. I can't say enough about a guy in Kyle Lowry who I'm not a big fan. I, I'd be lying to you if I said I was because I'm not. But when you have a point guard who's heady, who controls the tempo, who's your anchor defensively, who's basically your eyes and ears, I mean that that, that says a lot about your unit. And for Lowry to give them the for Lowry to give them the production that he gave them, I mean eighteen and ten, and you don't match that. I mean I thought he outplayed Marcus Smart yesterday, no doubt about that. And then you got your dirty work guys, in P.J. Tucker, in Struess. You know, Bam has been a forgotten man. You know, this Bam is a guy whose production in the playoffs every year has gone down. I mean, in year two, he averaged 18 and 10. Last year, he averaged 16. This year, he's averaging 13. I'm trying to make sense of what's going on with Bam. I've said in the past that I still think that the Miami Heat, I still think that the Miami Heat need to get a five, move, the, move Bam to the four, and start featuring him more in the offense. I did say that, and I still stand on it, because he looks lost. There's times when he doesn't even look at the basket. There's times when he won't go to the basket, because he's accustomed to just running the offense. And I think Robert Williams had a lot to do with his struggles defensively. You know, when you got one of the best big men defensively on you, who's hobbled, but one of the best big men defensively in the game that's dealing with you, and he makes it hard on you. That's, that starts to wear on you. Absolutely it does. So 
Bam has been a forgotten man, but this Miami Heat team as a whole, you know, we look at production in terms of points with this Miami Heat team, and there's so many other variables that come into. So, for example, Victor Oladipo didn't score in the fourth quarter. But defensively, he was one of the best guys on the floor, taking charges, getting at the loose balls. The fact that they held defensively, they held Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to seven shots in the second half. Seven. Jalen Brown scored two points in the second half. On three shots. That's it. Jason Tatum scored six points in the second half. So, I look at this unit. Jalen, Jason Tatum took two shots. One shot, I'm sorry. Two shots in the fourth quarter. And that's, a, that's not a testament to Jason Tatum playing bad. That's a testament to how good the Miami Heat defense is. Now, I would have liked to have seen him be more aggressive. But I thought that they did a lot. I thought that they did a lot of good stuff in jumping him when he got the basketball. Good switches. Pushing him 22, 24, 26 feet away from the basket. And then putting more pressure on him. And making other guys score. Which they did. You know, Derek White gave them great minutes. Robert Brown gave them great minutes. Al Hoffman in the second half gave them great minutes. We're talking about a guy in Derek White who had 11 points in the fourth quarter. In fact, he was the one who kept them above water. But when you get to this point in a basketball game where everything is almost even, everything matters. What do you mean everything matters? Everything matters like rebounding matters. Turning the basketball over matters. Free throws matter. When Jalen Brown missed those two free throws with two minutes left, we got a, we got a tie ball game, 99-99. And I said this before the end of the game. I'm thinking to myself, first team to 100 wins. That's, the, that's, that's what I'm thinking as we're going, we're getting late into the game. I'm thinking to myself, first team to 100 wins. And when Jalen Brown missed those two free throws, it's 99-99. He proceeded to go on an 8-2 run. Game over. Game over. Because everything else is pretty even. Right? Everything else is pretty even. They got out-rebounded in the fourth quarter by three on the defensive glass. Same amount of rebounds. Same amount of offensive rebounds. Same amount of turnovers. Because, like I said, when, you, when you're dealing with two defensive teams that are this good, your margin of error is this. I'm not saying it's this, it's this. So, that was a great, that was one of the better playoff games that I saw yesterday. I would have expected Jason Tatum to be more aggressive in a closeout game, like he was in game six against Milwaukee. I expected him to be more aggressive, but he wasn't. And I think that's a testament to the Boston Celtics. I think that's a testament to the Miami Heat defense. I do. I absolutely do. I was disappointed in Boston overall how, no question about it, they're hobbled. No question about it, the Miami Heat are hobbled, and Boston did not take advantage of that. I'm thinking about a guy in Giannis who they would have buried that Miami Heat team. As bad as, they, as, bad as that Miami Heat team were playing, Milwaukee would have buried them already. I, I stand on that. Giannis would not have let any of those guys off the hook. I think that they would have buried them. No doubt about it. And we got a game seven now. So all of the everything goes out of the everything goes out the window. Because you know what we're doing, we know what you're doing. I know what you run, you know what I run. You know defensively what I do, I know offensively what you do. So all of this stuff, all, all of that stuff goes out the window. Are there going to be adjustments made? Well, knowing Spo, I expect him to play a little more zone. I wouldn't be surprised if he played more zone this game. I wouldn't. That would not surprise me. And it also wouldn't surprise me if Udoka played some more zone, considering how bad the Miami Heat were shooting. I was surprised that he wouldn't. I, I was surprised that he didn't play more zone. So I can't. I couldn't tell you 
if the Miami Heat are going to win game seven because Boston has already gone in there twice and won. They won game two, handled them. Then they won game five, handled them. So there's no reason for me to think that they can't go in there and win game seven. No reason for me to think that. But there's also no reason for me to think that the Miami Heat can't win game seven either. So, but I got to pick one. I think that I had Boston... I had Boston pick to win this series in six, and I think that they squandered a great opportunity. And I think because of that, I think that might have cost them the series. And I think Miami moves on. I think Boston had their opportunity to win it, but I think that Miami moves on. And since we're on the subject of moving on, I mean, the Warriors are in the NBA Finals for the sixth time in eight years. I mean, this, this Dallas team, they went further than what we thought they were going to go. I thought they, was out, I thought they were out in round one. I did. But that, that, that first round series against Utah, it ended after game two. There was no way that they'd come back to Salt Lake City tied 1-1 without Luka. Without Luka. There's no way. That you're going to win this series with your with their best player out of the lineup. And you give them a game. We were supposed to come back to Salt Lake City up 2-0. That series was over after game two. It was done. Dallas has, I've said this countless times, Dallas's offense is predicated on Luka generating offense for everybody else. And when Bullock and Kleber and Finney Smith, when they don't get going, that puts so much more pressure on Luka. To get going. Add that to the fact that he's dealing with an offense that's coming at you in a number of different ways. And he he himself can't combat that. He himself cannot combat that. I expected this season for Klay Thompson to prove that he could hold up. I didn't expect Klay Thompson to be the elite Klay Thompson. And I think I got what I I, I think I got what I thought I was gonna get. Clay showed that I can still hold up. I can still play. Now, I might not be what I was three years ago, but I can still play. And I'm going to get back to that. But this was just the season to prove that I still have that. And I can get back to that, and I will get back to that. We're going to have to accept the fact that Steph Curry is in a, he's in a different space. Like I, I, I never really saw Steph Curry as a as a lead guard, as a point guard. I put him in the same category with guys like Allen Iverson, uh, Jerry West. You know, combo guards. That's that's what I've always looked at him like. And Steph Curry has that kind of game where once he gets going, he's phenomenal. The way he moves without the basketball, that offense, how it generates for him to to score. Not to mention. How they get out in transition, they're an impossible unit. And I think that they're taking advantage right now of a golden opportunity because I don't know how much longer this group's going to be together. I, 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 it, it may seem like they're going to be together. It, when, you, when you get to this point where you know, you're winning, you feel like this is going to be forever. When in reality, you know, things can change. You know, you got salary cap issues. you got free agency. And... If you don't understand the business of basketball, you can't talk basketball. And when I look at this Golden State team, I think that they're taking advantage of a golden opportunity to win it right now. Because there's no guarantee that we're going to be back here next year. None. None whatsoever. And I think that they're in a good position. I think they have a really good chance to win the NBA championship. And it's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely it is. So we'll find out. So... Like I said, guys, I'm going to be here for as long as you want me here. But until then, take it light, but take it.